Hey, hey, what is up? We're on the Creativity Bridge and I'm your host, Ruben Cueto. In our previous lesson, we discussed the power of perception and patience. We also covered the line traits of line length, angle, and curvature, and applied these ideas to some line progressions. Now in this lesson, we're going to use a perception strategy to help us improve our drawing skills further. So let's get that party started right. Go to creativitybridge.com and click on the menu on the upper left. There you can click on our first unit and the second assignment, Upside Down Drawing. Click on Purchase Lesson PDF and there it will take you to where you can name a fair price and click on I Want This. Here is our first drawing task. It's part of the Lesson PDF available on the Creativity Bridge website. Check out the link in the description below. Now you might be thinking, yo, yo, hold on, homie. How am I supposed to draw that? Shouldn't we start with something simple like happy faces or something? Well, not to worry because we have a strategy. We will be doing this as an upside down drawing. Now, why upside down? Because we need to develop our perception skills first. Allow me to explain. When we look at an image right side up, the logical side of our brain views the image and categorizes it, no matter what it is, a face, a building, a flower, etc. Our brain processes whatever it sees, which is how it's supposed to work. Well, when we look at the same image upside down, it forces our brain to pay more attention to the details because our brain is trying to make sense of what it sees. The basic idea here is instead of thinking you're drawing a face, a building, a flower, whatever it is, you will be telling your brain you are actually drawing a collection of lines in a specific arrangement. This reframing of the drawing task will help jumpstart our perception skills. Indeed, our perception skills must be addressed first before we address our drawing skills. When we turn the image upside down, the image doesn't change. Our perception of the image changes. And when we let go of any preconceived ideas of our ability to draw, it allows us to develop our perception skills further. This clarified perception allows us to create a more accurate drawing. So let's get back to our drawing task. Keep the drawing upside down the entire time you're going to draw. Resist the urge to check the progress of your drawing. Remember, the visual problem hasn't changed, only our perception of the drawing has changed because we want to draw what we actually see, not what we think we see. Our logical brain will want to identify the objects it sees and tempt you to use quick symbols instead. Ignore it and press on. Remember, when you're looking at this drawing task, there is no person, there is no face, there are no hands. The drawing in front of you is just a collection of lines in a specific arrangement. When you start drawing, don't begin with the outside perimeter and work your way toward the middle. Instead, begin your drawing from the top down, like a photocopy machine or a scanner. If it turns out that your drawing isn't going to fit for whatever reason, don't worry about it. If it doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. If you try to squeeze it in, it will only distort your drawing. Later on, we'll have lessons to help you size our drawings properly, but for now, we won't worry about it. Remember to ignore the temptation to identify the image or the parts in that image. There are no hands, there's no face, there's no clothes. Forget what the drawing is supposed to represent. It's just a collection of lines in a specific arrangement. Now let's address our drawing environment for a moment. Verbal communication, like listening or speaking, is primarily a logical left brain activity. This is the side of the brain that prefers symbols. But that is precisely the part of the brain that we do not want to activate. We want to leave the symbolic world behind. So while you are drawing, try to avoid talking or listening to conversation or having TV in the background or even listening to music that has lyrics. I highly recommend classical music, something that will relax you. Nothing too fast or energetic. We want to stay focused and calm. Allow me to draw this exercise for a bit so you can anticipate concerns that you might have and see how to deal with them when you do your drawing. Okay, so I notice that the drawing obviously starts up here. I see that this line begins at about this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my papers lined up side by side to give me an idea of how long things should be. So I look at this point right here and I'm going to start my line about here. But I'm not going to draw the entire line at one shot. I think that would be way too much. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a short line segment of it going this way. 
trying to emulate a slight curve that it has. And here, here's the first thing that we need to look for. See this jump between this line and the next? I wanna make sure that the jumps that I make with my pencil are accurate. So I look at this and if I put my pencil way over here, obviously that line is much closer. If I put my pencil way here, obviously my, that line is too close. So I'm gonna guess that it's about here and I'm gonna draw the line that goes like this. Okay, great. Now there's another line there. I'm gonna go ahead and put that line in here. And so what I'm doing is, like I mentioned before in our previous lesson, I'm doing a lot of guessing, right? But the more I do this, the more my guesses are going to be correct. Now what I know, need to notice right here is the line angle. This line is not horizontal. It's obviously not vertical. It has a bit of an angle to it. So I wanna emulate the angle and the length of that line as best I can. Probably something like that. If things are a little off, no big deal. If things get distorted, don't worry about it. Now that I have this, this line is shorter than the other one, and so far it looks like it's checking out. And then this line here, so you see the idea of the concept of jumping here, jumping from one line to the other. Think of it like um, rocks in a stream, and you have to guess, you have to guide yourself and figure out how much energy you need to make leaping from one to the other to the other. Well, when we're making our drawings here, we have to do the same thing. How far away is this line going to be and where should my pencil go? And if we make a mistake, we make a mistake. We can fix it. Remember, our goal is not perfection here, okay? We're just developing our skills, developing our perception skills, and seeing how things go. I notice that this line here, this line segment, is not horizontal. It's dropping a little bit below. It has a slight angle tilting down. And then this line here isn't as straight as these other ones. This one has a definite curve. It swings in and then it goes like this. So I'm going to try to find where that line begins. Going like this. All right, so we're okay there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do this little line and go this way. Now the next question is, well, why are you choosing this and not this? And why aren't you doing that and not that? The thing is, I want to make sure that things are in the right spot, and if I have some things on my paper, I know where other things should be. Let me explain. If I see this corner right here, it's a pretty good guess that this corner right here is going to be in this neighborhood, right? So if I know where something is already, that's going to help me locate where something else should be. If I would try to find, for example, this point, or this corner right here, or this line, I should say, I'm not sure where it should be. This is a very big leap that I would be making because I don't have anything, anything else near it. But since I have these things established, like this little line right here, I know where it's gonna go, so I've got things to help me, okay? So now that I have that, I see that there's this line that curves up this way and this way. I see how this line gets closer to that line, then it drops away, and then it gets really close. All right, and now I'm going to use these lines to help me figure out where this line's going to be. So, and you know, you see all these lines and it gets kind of confusing, but that's because of the inexperience in drawing. The more you do this, the better you're going to get. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and make a jump right here. I'm jumping like that. Now, where should this line end? If I know where this is right here, I'm going to use this as a guide to figure out that this is probably about here, right? So it's good to give ourselves um, targets. If we know where something is, that's going to help us establish where the next thing goes. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to do this network right here. There's a series of small curves. And you notice I'm not using words like legs and pants and stuff like that because I'm not worried about it. All I see, again, are lines in a specific arrangement. That's it. This line kind of flattens out a bit. Maybe it rises up and then it drops down. Now, I'm noticing that I've got some issues already because I think there might be a little bit more space right here. Wouldn't you agree? I think so best friend. Let's go ahead and fix that. 
So probably this line should be down here. Now, a catch like that, where you see something wrong, that's not going to come right away to the beginning artist. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That's going to take some time to develop. But the more you do this, the more you're going to start to realize, oh, this is off. This needs to be fixed. That's a mistake right there. And so, like I've mentioned before, our guesses will improve over time. And then they won't become guesses anymore because you will have developed the skill. There we go. Okay. So let's go ahead and establish a little bit of this. I'm going to make this line a little bit longer. And it goes this way. And now before I continue down like this, what I want to do now is I'm going to move a little bit more to the right because I know where some of this is going to be. And there's some key lines right here that connect the left side of the drawing to the right. And it's these lines right here. And this is going to be really helpful to figure out how things should be going vertically. So now that I have this, I'm going to go ahead and capture those turns. And it's something like that. And when I'm doing this line, I'm trying to keep in mind the distance in between here and here, here and here. Am I too close? Maybe I am. Let's go ahead and make a quick adjustment. That looks better. Now that I have that, I'm going to use this point right here and the, these two lines where they begin. I'm going to guess they begin around here and I'm going to start to angle them down this way. making sure that they're about the correct length, the correct angle, so the line trains that we discussed in our previous lesson. Now that I have this, now there's this line right here. I'm going to guess that it goes like that. It's not quite vertical, right? It has a slight angle to it. And now these two lines right here, the reason they're so critical is because they're so long. It's really going to help me, if I get this right, help me establish the vertical accuracy of the drawing. Now, it's tempting to go and grab a ruler, right? I wouldn't. My line's not going to be perfectly straight. But I do notice it has a slight angle. See how it's not quite vertical? It has a slight angle to it. So our line should have a slight angle to them as well. Okay. Now we're moving along here. And I'm going to go ahead and do this section right here. Do you see that? So when you begin your drawing... When you get this paper and start to try to draw this drawing also, you may be seeing some um, of the concerns that I have when it comes to how far away things are, where things should be, and all that. But the more you do this, the better you're going to get. Now, when you first saw this drawing, you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's way too intimidating. But honestly, I could have given you any sort of drawing to do. It's just that the concepts are the same. We want to forget what it is. We just want to draw a bunch of lines in a specific arrangement. And by keeping the drawing upside down, it's allowing my brain to relax and to see the lines as they actually are, not as I think they are. Because as soon as I start thinking about it, I'll probably mess up. Now, let me go back to an analogy when I was a kid, right? We all learned how to ride a bike. When I was riding a bike, the way it would work is probably how it worked with you guys. Um, there'd be someone behind me, right? Someone to support me. And at a certain point, they would let go. And you would think you're riding on your bike and you're thinking that that person is still behind you. And you're riding confidently and they're like way in the back watching you like, yeah, yeah, you're doing great. And you're pedaling along, still thinking that that person is behind you. At a certain point, you realize, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm alone, I'm alone, and then you fall over. Well, it's the same thing here. What we're doing right now is we're building our confidence. We're looking at the drawing, we're looking at these lines, and we're not worrying about it. If we were to take this image right side up, all these perception skills would kind of go out the window because we'd realize, oh my gosh, I don't know how to draw, I don't know how to do this. So what we're trying to do in a, real, in a very real way is to trick our brain when we were um, learning to ride a bike and that person let go, they were tricking us, right? So what we're doing is we're tricking our brain so it will develop the perception skills that it um, 
always had the potential of learning. Okay, so it looks like things are working out okay here. I'll make this a little bit smoother. And then we've got this part here. Now that I know where these lines are and this is, that's going to give me an idea of how far this should be. I'm going to guess that this line is around here. And I'm looking at the distance there. I'm looking for all of that. And I want to make sure that I don't go way too far. I don't, I don't want to get too skinny. Well, actually, I wouldn't mind getting skinnier. You know what I mean. All right, good. So I think that's a good start. At this point, let me suggest this. Begin this first drawing task to the best of your abilities. If possible, set a timer for about 30 minutes or so. And draw without turning the picture right side up to check it. Okay, let's not turn it to see how it's coming out. Once the timer is up, turn both your drawing and the source image around and see how you did. So go ahead, grab your pencil, relax, and draw. Okay, allow me to break you out of your drawing trance. I'll assume that 30 minutes have gone by for you. So go ahead and turn the image and the drawing right side up, and let's see what you've accomplished. Most likely, there's some distortions. Things might be stretched or compressed. Don't worry about it. I do have some questions, though. First, how did the experience feel to you? Was it relaxing, or were you tense while you were drawing? If you set a timer for yourself, did it feel like 30 minutes went by quickly, or did it go by slowly? Are you surprised by how much drawing you actually accomplish in that time? So take this approach for all the drawings in this lesson. Keep in mind that our goal isn't to make perfect drawings. We want to make mistakes so we can learn from them and over time get our mistakes out of our system. Here's the second lesson from the four drawings included in this lesson available for download on the Creativity Bridge website. Now you may recognize the model. Um, honestly, the cheapest model I could afford was myself and I know it's a lot of beauty to capture, but we're going to give it a shot, right? And we're going to try the same thing again. We're going to take this drawing, turn it upside down, and see how it comes out. Our focus here, again, is to develop our perception skills. We're not going to worry about how it comes out. We're not going to worry about the end result. The whole purpose of these drawings isn't to make good drawings. It's not to make good art. Right now, what we're trying to do is focus on our ability to perceive line lengths, angles, curvature, we're trying to figure out how far lines should be apart from each other. All those basic things that people who know how to draw do naturally, but how it's possible for all of us to learn if we focus on them from the very beginning of our um, journey here. So again, the drawing is upside down. What I'd like you to do is, again, do not do the outside perimeter of the drawing first and then try to fill it in. What I would suggest is start from this point here and work your way down like this, kind of like a copy machine, okay? like a scanner going all the way to the bottom. So I'm going to line up my papers this way and I'm going to guess that this line is going to begin around here and I see that the line begins with a curve, right? It curves like a sad face. So I'm going to go ahead and get that curve as best I can, trying to make it as wide as it is. Now if I mess up, no big deal, but I'm just going to keep trying here. And I see that these two other lines mirror that first curve. I'm going to go a little bit faster here. Um, you are welcome to take as much time as you want once you uh, start to attempt this drawing. And what I'm looking for is just line um, length, line angle, and curvature. And also where the drawing should go, where the line should go. So I'm going step by step, trying to figure out where everything should be. And then I, we've got these uh, big curves here. I'm going to go ahead and emulate that. Good. Now, some of the things that might be going through your mind is how fast should you be drawing? It can take as long as you want it to take. If you work slow, that's fine. If you work fast, that's fine. 
But I will say that as we progress further in these lessons, if you start to work faster, that's a really good sign because it means that you're starting to integrate everything, that you're not thinking as much. Right now, at the beginning of our um, drawing experience, we are thinking a lot. Go back to when you were learning to drive, for example, if you know how to drive. At the very beginning of your drawing experience, you'd have your hands on the steering wheel, right? Left hand, right hand, with a death grip on that steering wheel. And when you would look at the, um, at the view in front of you, as you're driving down the street, your head would move like a bird, trying to take everything in, all right? Instead of relaxing and taking the whole thing in. And the only way you got better at that is by practice. And so by doing this, by practicing, we're gonna start to relax. We're gonna just start to take everything in and see how it comes out. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw this line up to this point. I'm not gonna draw all the way up. I don't wanna to commit to, my, to this, that line so much. I just wanna figure out where that's gonna go and get that length correct and try to get all these directional changes happening in the line. Okay, now that I have that, I'm gonna look for this point right here and get this angle as it drops to the left, get the line length correct, and if things aren't exactly right, I'm not gonna sweat it, and neither should you, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and go this way. Now, if you want to work in a different way, that's fine, but the reason I'm doing it this way is again, like I mentioned in the previous drawing, I'm gonna draw stuff where I think they go based on where the other lines have already been established. For example, if I put this line here, then I'm gonna guess that this should be above it, right here, right? Do you see how I figured that out? Because of something that has already been placed, that's gonna help me figure out where things go. Now, if a line is too long or too short or whatever, don't stress it. This line goes up to about this point here, right? So when I'm drawing this, I need to end around here. Do you see how I figure that out? I'm checking alignments. We'll be talking about alignments in a later episode. Okay. I also want to make sure that all the lines are as interconnected as possible. Now, I'll admit, this drawing is not easy, but I don't want to start you off with easy. I want you to be challenged. The only way we improve is by challenging ourselves, and that's true of anything. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the sequence here, see how it drops down, goes up a little bit, then drops down again. I'm going to use a roller coaster analogy or like the like the um, like hills, you know, like a landscape. This line right here has kind of the same basic angle as it drops down. OK, now I can continue this a little bit more. Now that I'm here, this line and all this is really a key because there isn't anything that's bridging the left side here to this right side until I get to this point. Now that I've worked my way all the way to this point and I've got this line here, that lets me know where this long line is going to be. And like in the previous drawing, this line is not a pure vertical. It has a slight tilt to it. So I need to make sure that this line here also has a slight tilt to it. I'm going to draw this line all the way through as if this shape is not here. I'm just going to go all the way to this point, And I'm going to guess that this needs to be around here. You see why I did that? I'm going to be saying that a lot as we do these video lessons together. Do you see why I did that? When I have my students in the class, you know, sometimes I, I'll encourage them. If you guys are going to make fun of me, I want you to say, do you see why I did that? Or draw the large object first or whatever. Because it's showing that they're listening, that they're paying attention. Okay. Oh, actually, I see that I'm missing this line, huh? Easy fix. I think it's important that you guys see that I make mistakes too, all right? Um, because sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, you draw so well, you got all this experience. Yeah, but that doesn't make me immune from the uh, incorrect line, right? Uh, that doesn't make me immune from, um, you know, not getting everything right at the first shot. 
So if I'm going to be, you know, uh, presenting this information to you, I don't want you to think that I'm expecting perfection from my students. No, not at all. Because I'm not perfect. Now I'm going to go ahead and draw these um, lines here. Let's get rid of that one. Again, I'm not worried about what these lines are supposed to be, okay? I just see a curve, and then this line drops in this direction. I see this line, and it just goes right here. I'm just worrying about where it starts, where it's supposed to stop, and the direction it takes on that journey that it goes on. All right. Now that I have that, let's go up here because I'm missing this area right here. I'm going to look for this spot and I'm going to guess it's around here. This line swings up, obviously, gets to about this point. So that's going to give me that as a, as a goal, as a target to reach. And then this line drops down. And so it looks like we're doing okay. Mine might have some issues of, as far as size goes. Maybe this could be a little bit lower here, or higher, I should say. And if it's not exact, that's fine. Our goal is not perfection. It is improvement. If when you're done with this drawing, you're not happy with it, hey, that's fine. But I want you to be able to um, recognize what needed to be fixed, like I'm just doing right now, because I think that's one of the key goals for a, a student learning to draw. If you can recognize your own mistakes and be able to fix them, that's great. That's great. That's a definite sign that you're improving when you see, oh yeah, this needs to be fixed. This needs to be adjusted. Because people who don't know how to draw don't even know what's wrong with the drawing. But the more you do this, the better you'll get. And so again, we're just drawing all these lines. I'll smooth that out. Cool. And so we're off to a good start here. Um, I'd encourage you guys, keep the drawing upside down, complete it, Draw this line first and then work your way up and see how it comes out. This is the third of our three lessons available on this PDF for this lesson here. And here is yet another very attractive model for us to draw. This one's a little bit cuter, I think. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this image, turn this guy upside down, forget what it's supposed to be. And all we see are a bunch of lines in a specific arrangement. So I'm going to let me go ahead and put these papers right here. I'm going to go ahead and line them up side by side, look like what I've been doing. But I want to make sure that when I'm drawing this, that I keep in mind that I'm not worrying about anything. Let me go ahead and tape that up so it doesn't slide. I just want to relax and try my best. Because if you're doing these lessons and you're not finding any joy from it, then it's a matter of relaxation and just putting things into perspective. Meaning that we're not going to make a perfect drawing right away. We're getting our mistakes out of our system and we're going to get better and better as we go. If you complete any of these exercises and you're not happy with it, do it again. You're only going to get better. You're only going to get better if you keep trying. So let's go ahead and take the same approach here. We're going to work from the top. We're going to work our way down this way, forgetting what's supposed to be. I'm going to draw these weird shapes and work my way all the way back to this point here. So I'm going to go ahead and start <clears throat> around here. I'm going to draw this line. It has a slight raise to it. Then it goes like this and it drops down like that. This part goes this way. Like that. I'm looking for this little scoop right here. See that? And then it comes up significantly. Let me fix this. I'm not happy with this. There we go. All right. We've got this shape. And then this line rises up. 
Now, here's a critical part of the drawing. This line right here is going to be our first bridge connecting the left side of the drawing to the right side of the drawing. So this line is actually doing a lot of work because it's going to allow me to jump to this side to make sure that everything's in the right spot. Now, I want to make sure the line isn't way too long, obviously, because I'll make this character way too fat. I don't want to make it too short. So that looks about right. Again, our guesses are only going to improve the more we do this. Now that I have that, I'm going to go up this way. This line starts to curve down like so. I'm going to guess it's that long. I'm going to guess that that's the curve. Maybe it's off. I can always adjust it later if I need to. And now I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to use this as a guide. See how that gap right there is existing. I'm going to go ahead and do that. This drops down this way. Another thing that's going to be happening when you draw is that um, obviously you won't be on camera with people watching you, but also I'm hoping that you're not going to be talking. What I'm doing here is I'm explaining things and drawing at the same time. So I've got both sides of my brain firing at the same time. I mean, if you can do it, you know, from the very beginning and show that skill, that's great. But for the beginner, I would urge you just to relax, concentrate, like I mentioned before, try not to have conversations going uh, or people talking to you. Um, if you have music playing in the background, don't have anything that has lyrics in it for you to focus on. We just want to concentrate, also relax, and do our best here. And we want to give ourselves the biggest opportunity for success. And having anything like a distraction, well, it's a distraction. I want to catch that curve. It's obviously not vertical. It goes in quite a bit, and then it swings in a different direction. I'm going to guess that it's doing like that. This has this big swooping curve that goes like this. It stops at about here. So if I were to go vertically, it probably stops around here somewhere, right? Do you see how I figured that out? Because I'm using something I've already drawn, and that gives me a goal by checking vertically like this. And if it's off, it's off. In fact, I think it's off. That's all right. I'm going to go ahead and do this um, rectangular shape. And then the short line segment that goes this way. There we go. I'll fix this. Now we'll get into issues like line quality and shading and stuff like that later. Right now, like I've mentioned several times, we're developing our perception skills. Perception. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And now I want to get this curve going like this and like this. Do you see that? This one goes this way. This one goes like that. This little curve here and then this big shape that kind of looks like a football. Goes like that. And then this one goes way down here. I'm going to guess it's somewhere around here. Let's make it a little bit more football-y. Something like that. Again, let's not stress out about the accuracy of the lines. We do want to get better, but we don't want to go crazy doing this, right? This should be a relaxing, enjoyable experience. But also, and I'm going to throw this in there, there should also be a small amount of pressure because you're trying to get the lines exactly right. For the person who's just going, well, I'm just having fun and, and not worrying about the results, then you're not going to improve. If you are asking uh, for improvement of yourself, then you're going to sense a little bit of like, well, I hope I get this right. I want you to keep things in perspective. I want you to get it right too, but I don't want you to get it right at the expense of you stressing out. And I got this shape that goes this way. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. And then I got this shape right here that goes like this, connects to this. And right. And then there's all this stuff to come. So I can let you guys continue this drawing as well and see how it comes out. 
Again, if it's too long, don't worry about it. If he's skinny, stretched out, distorted, no worries here, okay? Let's just try our best and see what happens. Here's the fourth of our four lessons in this um, PDF available for download. And this is my spirit animal, right? And so we've got this magnificent rhino to draw. And so what we're going to do is we're going to forget that it's a rhino. We're going to turn this guy upside down. And it's just a bunch of lines in a specific arrangement. And we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to start from this area and go down this way and see how it comes out. So let me go ahead and get you started here. Let me get this on camera. And so we can give it a shot. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and line up my papers side by side to give me an idea of where things should go more or less. And I'm going to guess that this is around here somewhere, okay? Now, here I need to be careful because there's all this information to this side. So I want to make sure that I don't start my drawing way off over here because obviously all this won't fit. But if things don't fit, they don't fit. No one's going to hit you. No one's going to smack you around. No one's going to call your parents. Let's just see how it comes out because the next one that you do is going to be even better. I've been drawing, you know, pretty much all my life. My best drawings are yet to come, and yours will too. So let's go ahead and figure that out. I'm going to draw these weird little lines here. I don't know what they are. I don't care what they are. I'm forgetting what it's supposed to be. I'm disengaging that part of my brain. And I'm just going to draw these weird shapes, right? And it goes like this. And then there's a line direction as it curves heading in this general direction here. This gets skinnier, goes in this direction, and it curls like this. There's these four lines at about this point. Don't know what they are, don't care what they are. Now that I have that, that's gonna tell me where this other one goes. It's probably gonna start at about this point here. I'm gonna draw that open shape, short line segment, open shape. And then this is about here, line change, something like that. This line is about here somewhere. So I'm hoping that as you progress through these um, drawing tasks on the PDF, that you're starting to feel more comfortable with the whole situation, right? You know, let's be honest, whenever you start anything new, there's a challenge to it and there's a period where we don't feel comfortable where it's just constant self-judgment right oh i'm not doing this right this doesn't look good and all that i'm going to be honest with you most likely there are issues with your drawing right um don't worry about it really you know i mean i know it's easy for me to say don't worry about it don't worry about it you know but um the more you do anything the better you'll get the key is to recognize what it is that you're trying to do. Because I find when the beginning artist is just left to their own, like here's a paper, here's a pencil, draw it, draw it. They don't know what to do. They don't know where the pencil should go and all that. So the whole purpose of these specific assignments and these assignments that I've designed for you is to help you figure out where things should go. Okay, now that I have that, I see that this stuff here is maybe a little bit below this one, but there's a gap. So I need to, to, to take into account that gap that's happening here, but also its placement vertically. So I'm going to guess that's going to be around here, but the gap is about this. I'm going to draw these weird shapes again, not worried about it. Comes in. There's a, this is the widest point here. Let me fix that actually. I'm gonna fix this guy too. There we go. And you can see slight adjustments, slight um, imperfections of the line angle and length and all that will have an impact on the appearance, right? But um, that ability to self-correct is only going to get better as you do this. Um, I think one of the things that the beginning artist or the beginning anything, the, the beginning anything, you know, whatever you're trying to learn is to um, don't beat yourself up. You know, be nice to yourself. 
you made a bad drawing or an incorrect drawing. You know, so what? You're still cool. I'm cool. Relax. Because the fact that you're even trying, well, that's a source of pride, right? That we're trying. Let's fix that. And so we're progressing here. And learning to draw is a long journey. I made my mistakes in drawing when I was a kid, very young. And so there wasn't that voice in my head that was beating me up like, oh, this is a bad drawing. You shouldn't do this. Um, I just did it and I enjoyed it. And like I mentioned before in our previous lesson, you know, some of us would be drawing when we were younger. We stopped and our development stopped too. And so my job, my task, is to get you back on track, back to where you were when you were a little kid. So if your drawings are coming out like a child drew them, that's because in some ways a child is drawing them. The child inside you where the artistic development stopped at that point is getting back on track and we're crossing that bridge together. Okay, so it looks like things are working out, right? So I'd encourage you guys at this point to continue, establish this object right here, figure out how long it's going to go, and then work your way to this point right here, almost like the reverse summit, like the, the mountaintop, and then work your way back this way, and things should work out. I'm looking forward to seeing how you guys do. The drawing tasks presented here are available for purchase on our website, creativitybridge.com. You'll find other lessons designed to help you become the artist you've always wanted to be, so I encourage you to check it out. I'm Ruben Cueto. Thank you for joining me here on the Creativity Bridge. And always remember, creativity is your birthright. May it never leave you.